Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, what we're going to be talking about is the journey. <laughs> I think that that's a really fundamental way to put it, <laughs> that when we're talking about our journey, what do we mean by that? When we talk about our journey, I think often we start at the place that we want to end up, right? I want to be a dentist. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be an academic. I want to be an engineer. I want to be X. And what happens when we reach the top of that mountain? What happens when we become a lawyer? We become a dentist. We become an engineer. We become an accountant. We become whatever it is. Things don't just stop. You have to make more decisions. There's more coming. There's more advancement. I know that way back when I was applying to programs to when I was deciding what I wanted to do at first, and you'll know this from episode two, I thought, okay, I'm going to become a doctor. I'm going to become a doctor by the time I'm 24. I'm going to apply. I'm going to get in. Then I'll have everything figured out. I have a December birthday, which would have made that possible. And I thought that I would have had everything figured out by the time I was 24. And then things changed. I decided that that wasn't the right route for me. That wasn't the right path. And instead, I found myself with a lot of questions, a lot of questions that I didn't anticipate coming, a lot of questions that I didn't even know how to put into words. and. I began to have to think about the journey. Now, I know that for some people, and we all know people that we perceive that this similar sort of thing has happened for, where they make a decision when they're 10 years old or in high school or whatever, that I'm going to be a lawyer. And then after third year in university, they apply to law school, they get in. And after third year, they're going to law school and they become a lawyer by the time they're 24, 25. And you think, man, They have it all figured out. I know I thought that way. Man, that looked so easy. Why can't it be that easy for me? And it wasn't that easy for me. And what I learned over time, talking to people, talking to people in my network, talking to my clients, working with them very closely, what I learned was that a few things, actually a lot of things, when it looks easy for somebody, it's not, number one. And number two, that... There comes a time when they too will have to think about their next best steps. Because what I do see a lot of the time is that people who get into programs, their dream programs really young, is that, and that's great, by the way, like it's obviously such an accomplishment anytime somebody gets in and we absolutely celebrate that. What also happens though is that At some point, they do end up asking themselves, how did I get here? Did I make the right choices? And I see this a lot with professionals who got into their programs really, really young and started practicing really, really young. And like I said, there's no problem with that. And here at Apply Yourself, we have community members who are getting in very, very early to their dream programs. And we have some members of our community who apply to their programs much later in life as well. And so we operate at both ends of the spectrum and also with professionals who are transitioning careers because they realize at this time in their career, whether they're junior or senior, that the decisions that they made in order to get to that place are no longer serving them. So as part of our work here, And with me, what we do is we ask really important questions, no matter what age you are. 
And we talk very openly and transparently about what life could look like and also about defining the kind of life that you want so that you don't feel like you've made the decision, you've applied, you've gotten in, and then you're looking around saying, okay, now what? Because as we know, advancement never stops. It never ends. We keep advancing. We keep making progress. We we keep learning and growing. And that learning and growing, in my view, should never be stunted by a lack of thought. And so it's so important that with our clients, we ask those really tough questions to figure out the kind of life that you want. And often where that conversation starts is, well, I want to be a doctor or I want to be a lawyer. And that's great. But I also say that once you get there, what do you want your life to look like? And they say, well, I'll figure it out when I get there. Just like I thought I would back when I thought I was going to be a doctor at the age of 24. That obviously didn't happen because I chose a different path. And so we talk about what your life will look like once you reach the top of that mountain, once you achieve that goal. And we absolutely celebrate you getting there. There's no doubt about it. We celebrate along the way. We love celebrating here at Apply Yourself. We love celebrating your achievements, big and small, because there is so much to celebrate in your journey. And so what happens when you get to the top of that mountain, when you achieve that goal, when you graduate from law school, from your master's program, from your PhD program, from your medical school program, your dental school program, whatever it is, once you graduate, there's more to figure out. And so really importantly, And the reason that we love to celebrate the big and the small is that those reaching the peaks or what we perceive to be the peaks of those mountains is just the bottom of another mountain. And reaching the peaks, like actually walking across the stage, getting that piece of paper, getting your license number, that takes up like one, probably less than, I think, a lot less actually than probably 1% of your life. And so what happens the other 99.9% 9999% of the time is that we're working on it. We're taking the next best step. We're thinking about our next move. We're strategizing. We're thinking. We're being intentional. We're being thoughtful. Sometimes we're struggling. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes we're insecure. Sometimes we don't like how something has gone. Sometimes we're disappointed. Sometimes we feel like we're on the right track. Sometimes we feel like we're making the right decision and we're Moving forward with that decision, we feel good and then we hit a roadblock and we have to strategize through that roadblock. But what am I going to do? This isn't going to stop me. What am I going to do? Do I need to reach out? Do I need to seek support? Do I need to talk with somebody? Is there, we see this a lot with our clients in classes, for example, who are in university where something happens in the class with their grade, with an assignment. And their next best step is to actually go and learn more from their professor about a grade, about requirements before they're submitting an assignment and so many other options. So that other 99.99999 repeat percent of the time is the thinking, is the strategizing, is the actual journey. So we started by my saying, today we're going to be talking about the journey. And I sort of laughed at that because Everything that we do here is talking about the journey, but here what I really am focusing on is breaking down and conceptualizing what that journey actually means in terms of sort of like a timeline, because the way that we anticipate things will go is typically not how they go. And there is so much value to be found in the 99.99999% of the time that we're spending in our journey, not on our journey, in our journey, right? We're also working on our journeys here, but we're taking a lot of steps every single day that bring us either closer to or further from our goals, further from our advancement. And something that we have to figure out here is what are the choices that you're making day to day that are bringing you closer to or further from your goals? And so often when we're talking about this, We have our coaching calls, whether they're one-on-one or group, and someone, one of our members, many of our members, all of our members at one point or another are struggling with something, just like I did, just like you have. And 
We always meet on video. So I'm able to see facial expressions. And whether our clients, our group, our members are from Toronto, where I'm based, or whether they're in Nova Scotia or Vancouver, because we have members from across the country and we also have international clients as well. Going through that 99.9 repeat percent of the time can be very exhausting, regardless of who you are, regardless of where you're from. And so sometimes we have elevated energy during that time, and sometimes we have much lower energy and our eyelids are hanging and we're, we have a headache and we come to the coaching call and we're just like, you know, the question is, it's really more of a comment, like I'm exhausted. And it's during these calls, it's during this time that I call that 99 percent of the time, the slog. Not every part of our journey is going to feel easy. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be a lot of challenges. But the majority of our time is spent in that place, right? The majority of our time is not spent being recognized for our achievements. The majority of our time is spent in that in what we perceive to be the slog, the decision making, the receiving grades back, the working on assignments, the studying for exams, the applying for programs, the applying for jobs, the strategizing through what our next best steps are. And so what we want to do is make that 99% of the time and ensure that that 99% of the time is valuable, is moving the needle, is productive, is constructive, and is full of high vibe positive energy. So we want to bring that productive energy, that good energy, the hopeful energy to everything that we do. And to do that, number one, as I've discussed, we have to realize that the 99% of the time is where we spend most of our time, that the slog is actually where we spend most of our time. And when we reach the peaks of those mountains, yeah, we celebrate, We also celebrate the moves that you made to get there because that's the real accomplishment there. Sure, you got a piece of paper. Sure, you walked across the stage and that's amazing. You got that promotion. That's amazing. But why? What what happened that caused you to get recognized? The hard, hard work. And so I celebrate that with you while you're doing that hard work, not just at the end. And then once you reach that peak, you look around. And you say, okay, so I did that. What's next? And the number of times that I have felt that where I thought, oh, I'm going to have this all figured out. Like it's funny now thinking about it because I thought that so many times. Oh, once I, once I finish my master's, I'm just going to know, I'm going to know, I'm going to have everything figured out. Nope. (laughs) Once I finish my PhD, okay, I'm going to have everything figured out. And so often we attribute an age to that, right? Oh, in my 30s, I'm going to have it all figured out. In my 40s, I'm going to have it all figured out. Or when we're in high school, we're gonna say, we say, oh, when I'm 20, I'm going to have it all figured out. And it's just looking back, it's just so funny because it's so not how it happens. It's so, so, so not how it happens. And you get there, you're like, oh God, okay, so I'm 20 or I'm 30 or I'm 35 or however old you are or whatever that like age was for you that you thought, oh, I'm going to have everything figured out. And you get there and you look around and you're like, okay, certainly don't have everything figured out here. I have more questions than answers. And that's a great thing. Like, look at how much opportunity you've just given yourself by realizing you don't have all the answers. When I was doing my PhD and I was applying to law school, I thought, oh, when I'm, when I'm a lawyer, I'll have it all figured out. Then you're always faced with more questions. Where am I going to work? What am I going to do? Who do I want to serve? What kind of work do I want to do? What kind of life do I want to have? I think I've talked about this before. I applied to many law firms, downtown Toronto, around Toronto, to work after articling. And then 2020 happened. And I thought to myself, okay, wasn't expecting that, just like none of us were. Here's the thing. I didn't freak out. That's the funny thing. I didn't freak out. And here's the thing before I move on. I think the reason that I didn't freak out was because I had done so much work on myself to get to a place where I felt very much like I was confident in the decisions that I was making for myself because they were coming from a place of intentionality and thought. That is 100% true. And I also have, and I believe that things 
do work out so long as we're making thoughtful and intentional choices. I do believe that. Call it putting it out into the universe, call it a higher power, whatever it is. If you're making the right choices for yourself that are intentional and thoughtful, things work out. And so when 2020 happened and I had been offered jobs at really amazing law firms, everything in 2020 stopped. And I thought to myself, okay, well, this is interesting. What am I going to do now? I've reached the top of every single mountain that I've wanted. But here I am with more questions than answers about what I'm going to do next. And through a lot of thought, I realized, okay, well, I was, my plan was to work at another firm for, you know, five, 10 years and then open up my own firm. And when I was faced with more questions than answers, I realized I could do that work now. Why do I need somebody else to give me a job when I can create one for myself? And so I opened my firm. I founded my firm. And I'd already been running Apply Yourself since 2015 at that time. It was 2020. So for five, almost six years at that point. And so I realized at the top of a mountain, I was at the bottom of another one, a really important one, where I was making the decision not only that I wouldn't be pursuing other opportunities, but that I was betting on myself, on my skill, and I was investing in myself and my skill. And I also felt a sense of such empowerment and freedom because I knew that I could do it. I knew also that there would be a lot of questions that start with how. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to, I mean, every question under the sun. And there's still questions that come up every single day, every single day at the firm, every single day to apply yourself. And we work through them. And so while sometimes I call this the slog, because that's how we imagine it to be, It's actually the journey. It is so important at the same time to imagine yourself, visualize yourself, right? Through our work on visualization, you visualize yourself actually in those moments of celebration, in those moments of accomplishment, in those moments of achievement at the top of those mountains, because that can help us figure out those next best steps. But the important thing here is to realize that the journey, the slog, the journey is really where we're spending our time. And so it's so important that while we're going through our journey, we do it presently. We do it thoughtfully. We do it in a way that we are intentionally growing, right? So it's not just that you're making choices intentionally. It's that you're making the choice to also grow and to Pursue opportunities that help you to grow and that help you to get to that next level. By focusing on and being present in your journey, in every single decision that you make, you come from a place of productivity. You come from a place of energy that moves you forward and that helps you to move the needle in a way that is absolutely in alignment with you and the kind of life that you want. In both busy and less busy times of year, I want you to focus on the journey and celebrating the smaller and really important steps that you are taking every single day to get you closer to your goals. And this is absolutely something to celebrate. So what I want you to do is think about what are what those smaller steps are. And they may not feel small, right? They may not feel small. But what I'm talking about is the choices that you're making that are getting you closer, the actions that you're taking, the effort that you're putting in that is actually getting you closer. I would love if you would DM me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global or email me at Adrian, A D R I E N N E, at applyyourselfglobal.com. And tell me what those steps are that you're taking every single day, what those choices are, what the actions are that you're taking every single day that may feel like the slog, but that are actually moving the needle. And I want you to have confidence in those. So think about them. 
and let me know. Let me know. I'm genuinely interested in the steps that you're taking. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.